What's going on, friends? In the background is the Bamboo Lab H2D. But before we get into that unboxing, which is also coming up on the channel, so make sure you check that out, we thought we'd also have a look at the Bamboo Lab Studio, which is 2.0.089, and have a look around that suite and see how good this thing actually is. So, well, let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master of work. Okay, so lucky for me, I have been sent early access to the media kit and also the slicing software. So, well, I'll show you that now. So the first image inside of the media kit was that there are two printers that are being released. One is a laser, which is the green one on the left. And then we've got the standard one in the middle. And on the right hand side, you've got the AMS2 and you've got an AMS HT for high temperature filaments. That will all become clear a little bit later on. Above the AMS2, though, you also have what I believe is the plotter. So this will do uh, cutting of materials like plastics and stickers and things like that. So Bamboo actually did ask me which H2D I wanted. And well, to be honest with you, I do more 3D printing than I do lasers. So I opted for that as it was going to be here faster. Here we go. So as I said before, 2.0.089, uh, all your licensing information is basically put down here. And as you can see here, I've already selected the H2D. Like I said before, there is two different types. At this point, it doesn't really seem to matter which one I choose here, but we'll just have a look at some bits and pieces here. Okay rectangle yeah that's all the usual stuff you'd normally see information about cutters etc etc okay cool so one of the major things here is your ams now as i said before there are two different types now there's the ams single slot there's the ams four slot which is the version two and you can also use the version one apparently on this printer as well and of course we will test that so if you had slot one we can just select that i believe these will be allowed to merge together so you could perhaps have a five in total um, if you chose to one of those could be for i don't know pva different types of materials uh, then you've also got your high flow and standard flow here diameters which change now one thing i wanted to know and this is across the board for all slicers and all printers that have multi multi heads or multi tools is i would like to be able to print at maybe a 0.4 but then have a separate material maybe printing in a 0.8 but when you, of course, try to do that, it doesn't allow you to do that. Both of those have to be synced. So that's something that uh, in this software, and I believe that's totally software driven. If we're able to get a 0.8 on one and 0.4 on another, something I'd like to do. But um, certainly in the side of the software right now, it doesn't allow you to do that. Up here, though, we have got printer sync information. So when we plug everything in, it should sync back to this and hopefully recognize all the colors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, which is kind of what we're used to as a standard. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to open a project. Uh, one that I've been working on, which is this one. Um, that isn't what I was looking at. Here we go. Let's go back to this. There we go. So this is a two, two colored vase. And let's hit the slice information. We're at 0.2. Let's hit the slice button and see what we get. Okay, so left nozzle is black and the right nozzle is gray. And we're totaling here up to 15 hours and four minutes with a five minute prepare and time lapse time. Interesting. Okay. That's not too bad, I guess. We'll compare that, of course, later on to some other versions and perhaps what it would be. In fact, let's do that now. Let's, um, let's look at the X1 carbon and see what the time scales would be on that. And let's slice that again. We take all these with a pinch of salt. Okay, so yeah, so one day, seven hours, and that's with the typical purging that we're used to with Bamboo Lab Studios. That is actually massive, insane amount of time saved there. Um, okay, let's pop that back. So lots of time saved there, of course. When I hit that slice button, you do have a custom mode and a convenience mode to sync with the printer as well. Again, we'll look at that, obviously, when we, when we plug the printer in, which probably won't be inside of this video because we're going to do an unboxing and stuff as well. Okay, so 15 hours, 17 minutes is where we're at with that one. Let's have a look at what else we can find inside of the slicer here. Let's move that down. So we've got the speed settings, which again, we can change to our heart's content. A little bit of information about the support. And then is, I noticed when I went to slice this earlier, there is a video that we can watch here. So, well, let's have a look at that. 
The new Bamboo Lab H2D model features two nozzles and two completely independent feeding systems. So let's check out how this changes slicing and usage. When a single color extruder is printing and encounters two colors on the same layer, it first retracts color A and then loads color B. This process wastes the material inside of the nozzle, which they call flushing. However, if we let both extruders work together, each printing one color, we can avoid the flushing process. So let's look at a more complex scenario with three colors, color A, color B, and color C. If one extruder prints color A and the other handles B and C, you only need to flush once between B and C. This method saves both material and time. However, if one extruder prints both colors A and B, it requires constant switching between them on every layer with color B. This consumes a lot more time and material, making it a less optimal solution. Do you know how to assign the colors in this model to save the most material? Well, no worries. The studio will automatically calculate and recommend whether to place the material on the left or the right nozzle for you. You just need to sync the printer information so the studio knows the nozzle type and number of AMS units on each side. Then slice the model to find the best material placement. Next, just head over to the printer and complete the materials as recommended. If you're not near the printer and can't rearrange the materials, the studio can slice according to your current material set up in your AMS. It might not be the most efficient use of material, but it will get the printer running. If you have unique ideas or custom requirements, use the manual mode to assign materials to the left and the right. And that's the new experience that the H2D brought to us. Happy printing! So it certainly seems like you will need some kind of AMS system. I don't know if you can side spool it or what you can do at the moment. And of course, we'll discover that when we look at the unboxing video. But let's have a little chat about the AMS2 and the HT. So freshly unveiled are the AMS2 Pro and the AMS HT. And well, the differences are clear. The AMS2 Pro features four slots while the AMS HT just the one. But there's more to these upgrades than just capacity because both units now include active air drying with the AMS2 heating up to 65 degrees and the AMS HT reaching a stunning 85 degrees. Design improvements also enhance durability and more importantly, the older AMS units remain compatible inside of this ecosystem. Now the key upgrades include high forge servo feeding motor and a ceramic filament inlet, both designed for long-term reliability. However, the standout feature here has to be the new active drying system. Now, unlike traditional solutions that just add heaters, Bamboo Lab's proprietary electromagnet vents allow for precise air exchange during the drying cycles and airtight sealing for storage, ensuring the optimal filament conditions without manual intervention. Nice. While the AMS HT is built for engineering grade filaments, it reaches a higher drying temperature and features filament bypass paths to reduce feed resistance, which is essential for handling fiber reinforced materials and also flexible materials like TPU. And of course, these AMS units also come with RFID. But now it's a word from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at polymaker.com and if you're thinking about buying the H2D, well I'd appreciate you using the affiliate links down below. And if you're in the market for printing high temp materials, Polymaker offer the very best in the business. From ABS to Zombie Hedgehog's own unique blender filament, TPUs and various carbon fibre infused elements. So I'm sure you'll find what you need over at polymaker.com. There we go. And also don't forget if you are a maker, make sure you check out PCBWay.com. This video today is proudly sponsored by PCBWay, your go-to high-quality PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, and CNC machining company. Whether you're creating your next big project or experimenting with cutting-edge materials, PCBWay has the tools and expertise to make it happen. Check out PCBWay.com today and bring your ideas to life with precision and passion. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this channel and creators just like you. Let's have a look back at the Bamboo Lab Studio and see what else we can find. So we're back into Bamboo Slicer. One of the things you're going to see is understanding how grouping works. So there are some limitations to the bed. There's a limitation on the height. So on the left hand side, you'll be able to print up to 325 mil. But on the right hand side, if you're just using that right hand nozzle, it's 320. The limitations also are on the left and the right hand side. So if you imagine like an IDEX machine, you have a certain amount of the build plate that you're going to be able to use and mix colors and things like that. And it's the same here. So for instance, if I use the left hand nozzle, which in this case is denoted by a red cube, and then I try and then put that onto the right hand side, of course, it's going to throw an error all up around my face here. So the same goes with, with the black side as well. If we go over here and we go over here, we then throw an error. So you're not able to print fully left with the right hand nozzle or fully right 
with the left hand nozzle. I think that's right. Um, and there's no real way around that other than just making sure that you're grouping things in the right ways. Now, what you could have, for instance, if you wanted to print that maximum size, you might have a red or the same red in the right AMS, in which case you would be able to use that full capacity. So balancing and mixing the groups are going to be really super important. So on the grouping, there is something you're going to need to get your head around. Each nozzle on the tool head has a specific material and placement limitation due to its physical design and characteristics of the filament. High priority restrictions dictate that TPU can only be printed using the right hand nozzle, where carbon fibre, CF and glass fibre, GF materials are limited to the left nozzle. Additionally, for parts exceeding the height of 320mm, they should be positioned within the right hand nozzle's print area, though this is considered a medium priority requirement. While placing parts exclusively either on the left or the right nozzle zones, they must be correctly grouped to the corresponding nozzles for printing. While general filaments can be printed with both nozzles, it's recommended to use the right hand nozzle wherever possible, though this guideline holds with lower priority. Clear as mud, right? Well, it's all about group priorities and ultimately trying to save material purges, which is massively encouraging. So the right nozzle maxes out at 325 millimeters, where the left nozzle maxes out at 320. That means that if you're using the left nozzle alone, you have a slightly lower build volume than using the right nozzle, which is why you're prioritizing the right, of course. As you can imagine, while this setup is fairly unique, it does share some of the factors with a Core XY IDEX machine. However, unlike an IDEX in this case, the two nozzles are connected inside a single print head. On a Core XY IDEX, you could print two models at the same time, be it with a smaller achievable print volume, like can be seen on the Ratring VCore 4 IDEX. So to be clear on the H2D, the total print area is actually 325 by 320 millimeters. However, each nozzle has a specific zone that it can reach. As we've seen, the left nozzle can print anywhere from 0 to 325 on the full width, and the right nozzle can print anywhere from 25 to 350 shifted right. In Bamboo Studio, the build plate shows those marked zones left and right. The left side, of course, is for the left nozzle only. The right side is for the right nozzle only. And the middle section can be used by either nozzle. This setup ensures the correct nozzle is being used on dual material or multi-nozzle projects. And that's just about a wrap for the Bamboo Slicer on the H2D. Hopefully you found this video helpful, entertaining, or slightly or mildly interesting. If you did, then please do me a favor and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that bell so you don't miss what's coming up next, which of course is going to be the unboxing video. Now I've got plenty more exciting projects, reviews, and of course 3D printing madness on its way. Not just this machine, but other machines as well. But there's tons of projects definitely going to be coming up on this one. So make sure you keep yourself locked in for that. So, of course, I am very lucky to have this machine early. So thanks to Bamboo Lab for that. And, of course, the sponsor for today. If you do have any questions specifically about Bamboo Studio or the printer itself, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget, in that description, there are affiliate links there if you want to help the channel out. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.